about post reading, which is the last section. We'll go through this PowerPoint and then we'll talk about the assignment. So post reading comes after reading, and that's where you think about what did I just read? What is this all for? So some of the key skills that are going to be useful are to summarize. So what is the main idea of the whole piece? In the navigation section, you are able to summarize sections of the piece. Now, look at all of those sections. What's the overall main claim? Also, you're going to use some of those contextualizing skills. So go back to what you did in your pre-reading and think about who wrote this? When did they write it? Why did they write it? You also might want to categorize. What sort of thing is it that I read? Is it a newspaper article? Is it an opinion piece? Is it the kind of thing that could be background or something that could be an actual opinion source that you use? You also might want to define what are the key terms or concepts that goes into that reading. So this might be the sort of thing that you would summarize with. This article says that while the cow tax is a great idea, it will never happen because of American political alliances with farm subsidies. It was written in 2009 after a law passed forbidding a cow tax. The author sounds like someone who values economics and the environment. He describes cap and trade, which is an economic idea that sets a limit of something and lets people sell permits, right? The next part is analysis. So summarizing, then analysis. Relate, how does the position or author relate to others? So that's gonna be using your what? Your connection, right? Your connection marginalia. Um, do they agree with one other author and disagree with another? Interrogate, what are the strongest and weakest elements? What's their best argument? And hypothesize, is there any evidence or question that would challenge this position? So here's an example of that. The author seems to focus a lot on the economic efficiency argument, but ignores perspectives like the rich cultural heritage of cattle ranching in America. Also, although he makes some strong arguments for why such a tax might not work politically, he's a little too cynical. Politics can change. After all, just 20 years ago, who would have thought that hybrid and electric cars would be endorsed by Detroit? He says that the issue is decided, but if global warming gases continue to grow alongside beef consumption, the government may return to the idea of a cow tax someday. Right? So none of this is like your own opinion, this guy's stupid, but you're actually beginning to think about what are his strongest arguments, what might be a counter argument, things like that. So you can find places to write these notes. You could write it on the blank pages of a book, so the last couple of pages where it's empty. You could write it on index cards. You could write notes wherever your class notes are, so maybe you have a notebook for this class. You could buy a journal and write notes of what you read in the journal. I've certainly had friends who keep books full of the different types of books that they read. And of course, there's a lot of other options too. Be creative about where you keep your notes. You can also keep digital copies. Goodreads is a great website to keep track of all the stuff that you've read. It's like those journals about books where you can just write little posts about each book that you've read after you've read it. You can keep it in your phone. The library has some good clipboards where you can keep some stuff. There are programs like Evernote or Zotero that will let you keep track of your notes. And Google Docs is a great place to keep summaries of the most important information that you've found. Google Docs especially can be useful for this assignment because you might find yourself cutting and pasting sentences or ideas from your summaries into your actual paper. Um, so all of these are kind of what's called a commonplace book. A commonplace book is not a journal, um, but it's a place to put all of your information about a certain idea. So this could be digital or it could be physical. These are the sorts of things people put in there, quotes, annotated bibliographies, notes, observations, things like that. Ideas of things that you want to look at later. All this stuff can go in your commonplace book. So, reading being a process, uh, let me show you the assignment that you guys have coming up, which is this annotated bibliography assignment. You'll find this on the unit. Um, and what you're going to do is this is all about your post reading. So you're going to give a citation. This should be in MLA or APA format. Choose one and stick to it. 
Then you're going to have a summary of what the source says. So we're going to talk about claims, reasons, and assumptions on Monday. So it's important that you have that like prepared on Monday to be able to come. Um, you're going to summarize the stuff we did here. And then you're going to talk about background, about why you trust this source. Prove to me that this is a good source. Who was it who published it? What background do they come from that might lead to a bias? When was it published? Who is the audience? Any relevant information. You might want to use Wikipedia to find this source. You could use an author's bio, some of these other places. Um, you have three to five sources. Only one source can be a background source. All the others have to be opinion sources. So this is an example of an opinion source. It has the editorial, the information right here. It gives a summary of what the opinion says, and then it talks about who is the daily news. Okay, it's a tabloid. All right, well, what does that mean? What kind of influence does it have? That kind of stuff. The other place where I want you to go to look for the um, information about the bibliography is the reading. Uh, in the textbook, there's a section called Writing an Annotated Bibliography. So that's this one right here. And you did the reading for today. I assume. And there's some good examples right here about what an annotated bibliography looks like. They have an example of this one. Um, it's more of an academic article, but it summarizes what it says right there. For ours, you're just going to add that second section where you give the background information of who they are. So um, that's the annotated bibliography assignment. You'll notice it's not due for a little bit longer. But uh, keep working on it. Um, anyway, I think you're great. You guys are going to do a good job. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and I will see you on Monday. Don't forget to take the quiz, obviously, that too.